Chelsea 1, Arsenal 1. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Neto and Casado, my standout performance for Chelsea, and Marino, the impact he made off the bench, and Odegaard's return, who were a standout for me for Arsenal. The game ends 1 1. I think both teams probably wanted the three points and wanted to win that game, but I think a 1 1 draw on reflection of the game was probably quite fair. Either way, I don't think either team can complain too much. I assume Chelsea may be happier with the draw than Arsenal, although Chelsea did drop points last week to United, like Arsenal dropped points. But I think if you look at the expectations coming into the season, Chelsea fans, if you said to Chelsea fans at the start of the season, top four, I think a lot of Chelsea fans would have been very happy with that. Whereas Arsenal, they want to win the title. They don't want to be top four. And that puts Chelsea in third place. I think if Chelsea finished third place this season, it would be an unbelievable achievement in Maresca's first season. So I think Chelsea will be more happy with the point. But I think Chelsea themselves didn't have the finishing to win the game against United, win the game against Arsenal. It is two points dropped in two games in a row. But I think when you look at where Chelsea are at and the context of the season, they're doing really well. Now, I think Arsenal looked a lot better today. I think it was a much better performance from Arsenal. I think Arsenal had the better chances in the game, but I do think that Chelsea had a little bit, bit of a bit better tempo to their play, if that's the way I could describe it. And maybe if Arsenal were more clinical, they could have taken it. And if Arsenal wants to be in a tight race, they have to take the three points today and take those chances right at the end, but they, which they didn't. Because with Manchester City dropping points, I think Arsenal feel a bit disappointed that they've not taken advantage of that. City are falling off. This is Arsenal's opportunity to take advantage of it. That being said, I saw enough from Arsenal today to think that Arsenal are going to get back on a winning run. And if City and Liverpool drop off, then Arsenal can get back up there. There's a long way to go. But I also saw enough for Chelsea today to say that Chelsea are really closing in on the big teams. They really are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Chelsea for a little bit and Casado. Then I'm going to talk about Arsenal for a little bit and Odegaard. Then I'm going to talk about Neto. Then I'm going to talk about Marino. Then I'm going to talk a bit more about Arsenal. Then I'm going to talk a bit more about Chelsea. I'm going to try and mix this up because I know I've got some Chelsea followers and some Arsenal followers that watch the channel. But please do hit the like button if you have not already. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Three, Chelsea will end the day in the top three places of the Premier League table for the first time since the final day of the 21-2022 season when they finished in third position behind Man City and Liverpool. They're now currently in third behind City and Liverpool. After 11 games in 23-24, Chelsea were 10th. They are now third place, four points better off. And you know what? Because I saw a lot of Chelsea fans not 100% happy about their transfer window, a little bit nervy going into the season, a little bit of negativity around Chelsea going into the season. I think people were sceptical about Moresca because he's so new to management. But I think Chelsea, being in third place after 11 games, I think if you'd have said that to a Chelsea fan in August, I think they'd be very happy with that. I think because Chelsea dropped points versus Arsenal, dropped points versus City, I can understand why Chelsea would want the win because they'd be two points behind Man City. But Chelsea have played Manchester City. Chelsea have played Liverpool. Chelsea have played Arsenal. They've even had to play top teams like Brighton, who've caused problems. They've had to play top teams like Newcastle, who they beat in the Premier League, who've caused Arsenal problems, City problems, Tottenham problems. Newcastle took points off of all of them. Forest was a difficult game. They've had to play Forest, who were third in the Premier League before this game. You know, Man United as well. Chelsea have had to play pretty much all the sort of difficult games. I think you've got Spurs next. Well, not Spurs next. I think you haven't played Spurs. But Chelsea do have quite a good record versus Spurs. But when you think of the games that are the games that you drop points in, Chelsea have played all those teams and they're in third place after being tested. So I think where Chelsea are at, I think they're good. And I think one thing I wrote about Chelsea, my general thoughts with Chelsea, is I think Chelsea have shown this season that they are closing the gap. Generally feel that, our, that Chelsea are closing the gap. You know, Liverpool, City, Arsenal seem to have a gap above everybody else. I still think Liverpool, City, Arsenal will be the top three. Arsenal will bounce back, get back on track. Chelsea, fourth place for me. Fourth place for me. Above Villa, above Forest, above Newcastle, above United, above Tottenham. Chelsea, fourth place for me. Because if I look on the eye, Chelsea have played the second best football after Liverpool this season on the eye. And the underlying numbers back that up. Um, but I just think they, with the Premier League and the experience of Arsenal... City and Liverpool being in a tight race before, I think they might finish above them. But I think Chelsea are very good. I think Chelsea are in a very good position. And I think Chelsea are showing that they are really closing the gap on 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 the you know 
Arsenal City Liverpool. I think they really are. Now, Neto Casado were my standouts for Chelsea. I thought they were the two best players. I think Cucurella did well. I thought Fafana had a good game. I think Fafana's got a lot of stick lately, but I think he had a good game for Chelsea. My Arsenal standouts was Odegaard. He clearly makes a difference when he's on. And I thought Marina, when he came on, did really well. And I thought Arsenal maybe lacked a bit of spark, a bit of creativity, a bit of speed with that final ball. And I thought the last 20 minutes, Odegaard, Marino, I think that worked quite well. I think if they can get Calafiore on the left, uh, Timber on the right, Gabriel and Saliba as the set of backs, Ryan goal, Rice fit as the six with Marino and, and uh, Odegaard there, and then I think Saka, Havertz, and probably Martinelli left wing. That is Arsenal's strongest starting eleven. It's just about getting everybody fit. I think Declan Rice has fitness issues, Calafiore has Odegaard had. That's what it is for Arsenal. It's about getting them fit because I think that can work quite well. But I look at Arsenal, I think they definitely need to invest in a, in a top, top left winger. I think had they been able to get a Nico Williams, that would have been beneficial for them because I think Martinelli is a good player and I think sometimes the environment and the way that Arsenal set up doesn't help Martinelli but I also think he needs to be more clinical and do more if we're going to be honest I felt Arsenal probably had the better opportunities but they seem to fail to 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 convert that winger they seem to not be clutched you know when they were winning games like last season Luton and Kai Havertz won it at, at, at the death against Luton and Arsenal sort of getting those wins over the line when you're in a title race, sometimes you just have to really get that win over the line of stoppage time. And Arsenal had that chance last kick of the game and they just quite didn't do that. But I think a draw seems fair because I felt Chelsea played maybe better in terms of the tempo. I thought Casado had a fantastic game. Maybe Arsenal had the better chances. Both teams maybe frustrated that they couldn't kill off the game. But I think a draw was a fair mistake. I think Arsenal played better at times, but I think Chelsea were more ready to jump on Arsenal's mistake mistakes that they made. And Chelsea did good at that. Um, I thought Timber did OK, and I think that both teams did all right in that game, but I think a point is very fair. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on Chelsea, and then I want to talk about Casado. I think this could feel like a frustrating result for Chelsea, but I think you have to look at it as a decent outcome overall. Two points in the last two games, probably not what Chelsea want, but they're in third. They played United away, they played Arsenal. Difficult games. I believe that Arsenal beat Chelsea like 6-0 last season or something ridiculous like that. Was it Arsenal that beat Chelsea 6-0? Am I thinking of another game? Right, it was 5-0, not 6-0. And I think you can see in this game just how far Chelsea have come. The quality is there at Chelsea. I think they're just struggling to have maybe those game winners to finish strong. They need a few more signs. It's so early in the rebuild, but you're seeing that the quality is there at Chelsea. You're seeing how far they've come so far on the Moresco. And if I was a Chelsea fan, despite dropping points, I'd feel really positive about that. I'd be third place going into national break doing well against the big teams, even though you lost to City, even though you lost to Liverpool, you put in a performance, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, you didn't get battered. Like, I support Man United, we got turned over 3-0 by Liverpool, 3-0 by Tottenham. Chelsea have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with all those teams, and I think Chelsea are so close to competing at the top, and I think considering this is the first season of Maresca, considering where Chelsea have been the last two years, I think this is a good place for Chelsea to be. I also want to give a shout-out to Enzo Fernandez. I thought he had a very good cameo as well, thought he looked good. And I think Chelsea's biggest problem is defending. The goalkeeper's the biggest problem and sloppy errors in defence. I think Chelsea need a new goalkeeper. I think they probably need another centre-back. They need to just fix up those sloppy errors in defence. Other than that, I think they've got a good side. Maybe another winger. Um, but I think Neto, Madueke, Sancho, Mudrik, they're good options, but none of them you're like, Neto, I think, is your best winger. I'll be honest. I always say Neto. And I think they're good wingers. But maybe a winger. I think Elise would have been game-changer. A goalkeeper. Probably another defender. I think Levi Colwell and Fafana did well, but I think a long-term partner, like a Canate-esque partner for Colwell is, is, is probably what Chelsea would want. But let's look at Moises Caicedo. Moises Caicedo was my man of the match for Chelsea today. He was also my man of the match in the Chelsea versus Man United game. He really impressed me. I mean, he's been very good in 2024. I think his first month or two at Chelsea was a bit iffy and they have the 100 million price tag and then people were just like, yeah, he's a floppy. The floppy's bad. Uh, but he's not a flop. He's been very good for Chelsea and he's been like this for a year. I'd say for about a year now, Moises Caicedo has been good. But I think because of the price tag and because he didn't start the best, I think people try and make out that he's bad. But I think Chelsea have actually been good themselves for nearly a year. I think in December, they took a bit of a turn under Poch and they went on quite a good run in 2024, which is why I was kind of surprised Poch was sacked. But I think that was the right decision looking at what's going on with Moresca now. But I think Caicedo and Chelsea have been better than people think. I think they started becoming quite good again sort of December time. Casado was fantastic. One possession, eight times, six out of eight long passes completed, five duels, one, three tackles, two blocks, one clearance. Proper captain's performance. You look at his recent performances there, Arsenal, United, Newcastle, Liverpool, Forest, Brighton, West Ham, Bournemouth, Palace. They're not easy games, some of them. And he's done really well. So this is what I wrote on Casado. Dominant in midfield, standout player versus Man United and impressive again today. 
controlled Arsenal's midfield with superb coverage, ball recovery and winning duels. Uh, effective in transitions, breaking line with accurate passing and setting up dangerous plays. What I mean is he's someone that is doing really good off the ball. He's breaking up play. He's winning back the ball. He's covering ground, his reading of the game, his movement, his tackling, his ball recoveries, his interceptions. What he brings to the rest of the fence is absolutely incredible. I think Casado has been Chelsea's stand-up performer. Casado and Cole Palmer are Chelsea's two best players this season. Without a doubt, Cole will probably just behind him third. But when he wins back the ball, he's so good on the ball. He can win back the ball, but then he can play the ball and he can break those lines and he can play the ball quick to start transitions and move it quick. I think defensively, Lavi and Casado work really well together. But I think creativity, creative-wise, Enzo brings a bit more than Lavia. And I felt that he did get the ball moving quite quick. I think he's very good. You know, five duels, one, three tackles, 95% pass accuracy, eight recoveries in the first back, first half. Winning back the ball eight times was fantastic. Winning possession eight times, you know, three more times than on the pitch. He's very good at reading the game, breaking up play. I felt that he was everywhere in midfield. I feel like he covers every bit of grass. And then we could what a fantastic player because not only is he everywhere in midfield, breaking up every, sorry, covering every, blade of grass he's winning back the ball but he's playing the ball quickly he's breaking the lines he's moving the ball well on and off the ball I think Casado has been Chelsea's top performer this season I think because Palmer probably because he's Palmer is the best player but I think Casado has been unbelievable stand out in 2024 I think he's been really good for Chelsea defensive awareness ball winning progression with line breaking passes that is what you want in your midfielder that is what Casado does I think he's been so good for Chelsea for a while. I think he goes under the radar. Look, I'm sorry if I was talking really fast there. I have so much to say and I don't want this video to drag on. So I feel like I've been speaking really fast and I have so much in my mind and I'm so tired because I made about four match reactions today. But I hope that made sense. Let's talk about Arsenal. On the plus, Arsenal remain undefeated against all big six teams this season and I believe last season. They've continued on that record. On the downside, with City dropping points and Arsenal dropping points, this is Arsenal's chance, if they win three points, to restore a bit of faith back in their fans that they're still in the title race. I think a lot of fans who support Arsenal think, yep, Arsenal no longer in the title race, la de la Had Arsenal won today, gone two points behind Manchester City, even though Liverpool are at the top by quite a bit still, I think there would have been a positivity within Arsenal fans that they could be back in that title race because City have looked shite. And if City keep playing like they do, they're going to drop more and more points. Liverpool have looked very good. But I spoke to Arsenal fans and they seem more worried about City than Liverpool. Is it because City, back end of the se season every year, come from behind them winning like 20 games in a row and then end up winning the league for the last four years? Maybe that's why. But a lot of Arsenal fans are more fearful of City. But I think that's a bit disrespectful to Liverpool because Liverpool have looked miles better than City this season, like on the eye. As someone that watches a lot of football, Liverpool have looked a lot better than City. Uh, my thoughts on Arsenal and particularly Marino here. I thought Marino was really good off the bench. I thought... One thing I like about Mourinho is he had he was asked to stay further forward. And I think Mourinho is not like a number six. He's someone that when he can be a number eight, he looked better. I thought he helped open the game up a little bit and helped um, maybe Arsenal move the ball a bit quicker. I actually think Mourinho does his best work in the final third rather than the defensive third. Like he's an all-phase midfielder. He's good in all phases, but I think he was particularly good in the final third. I think he made a good impact. I thought him and Odegaard were working well together. I think... They helped Arsenal get a bit more control and look more threatening towards the end. I thought Arsenal didn't start the second half the best, but kind of grew into it. I think with Marino, people have got to remember, he joined Arsenal injured. He's joining a new league. He needs a period to adapt. I think once he's got that period to adapt and build up fitness, I think he is in Arsenal's best midfield. Rice at the six, Marino and Odegaard is Arsenal's best midfield three. I know Partey's probably looked better than Rice lately, but Rice at the six, for me, Rice is a six. I think Arsenal created more chances, but we're a little bit slow in possession at times. And I think that's something they need to work on. Uh, I also think they're not clinical with their finishing. I think Trossard, who's normally clinical, missed a chance with his offside. Jesus has been wasteful and poor this season. Martinelli, I think when Calafiore plays, he looks a lot better. There's a good player, Martinelli, but he's wasteful at times. I think Arsenal need that additional attacking option. Um, I thought Raya played well. Odegaard, I think, was Arsenal's best player today. 100% tackles won. 12 out of 14 final third passes, four chances created, two big chances created, two shots, one assist. I felt that Arsenal looked a bit more creative. They were doing a bit more in attack. And I think Odegaard was the main reason behind that. These were notes I wrote on Odegaard. Odegaard's presence was crucial. He drove Arsenal forward, set up an offensive, effective pressing strategy. He guides Arsenal's press and helps keep the team organised. And what I mean by that is... He feels like a, you can see he's the captain. You can see he's the leader of Arsenal because he's instructing Arsenal players where to press, where to position themselves, when to press harder, when to up it. He almost is like Arteta on the field. 
he has that manager's leadership to him. I That's what I see in Odegaard. He's telling players what to do, where to go. And I think Arsenal looked a lot more organised and their press was a lot better because Odegaard was on the pitch. He was that voice. I think his positioning it, is very good. He draws defenders out. He opens up space. He can utilise that. He can play people through. He brings that creativity. And I think Marino coming on complemented him well. And I think while it was nothing crazy special, I think you can see how much better Arsenal of Odegaard and how he benefits the team and I think you could see he was fatigued he's not fully fit he didn't he hasn't played since August and he gets thrown in like that you know that was brave from Arteta but top player Pedro Neto fantastic today I think Pedro Neto has been really good his last few games for Chelsea I think that goal was deserved I think that goal was coming um I think he looked really good particularly when he moved on to the right I think the goal was fantastic Pedro Neto actually is four of his like last six goals I think have come against the Premier League traditional top six his goal and assist per minute ratio is very good in the Premier League. And I generally think Pedro Neto will be a very good signer for Chelsea. He's a player that I massively rate. He's a player that I wanted at United. I think he created two chances. He made the difference today. He took the the shot so well. He's a, he's a good scorer. He can assist. He can make things happen. Generally, I think there's a lot to come from Pedro Neto at Chelsea. I do highly rate him. Um, Cucurella, I think, did all right as well. I mean, made a few fouls, but um, I think he did quite well today. Um, I think he's been quite good since the Euros. I think, yeah, he's really grown as a Chelsea player. And I thought Saliba did quite well. I know Chelsea got the goal and stuff, but he created two chances. He wasn't dribbled past. I thought Saliba had a good game. But it is interesting about Arsenal's defence. They don't seem to be keeping the clean sheets like they used to. They don't seem to be as clinical. Anyway, people, please do go ahead and hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Thank you for watching. Bye.